Hello everybody and welcome to Letterbox Book Club. I am Mackenzie. And I'm Claire. And this week we will be discussing, in honour of Claire's birthday, Dance of Thieves. Yes, by the time this is released it will be my birthday. Woo! Claire is entering her late 20s. <laughs> late 20s era it's gonna be an era it's gonna be a fun time you're gonna peak <laughs> yeah, exactly it's only up from here i just need a quick acknowledgement um i'm a little bit sick i guess have a bit of a cold so i might sound a bit nasally um and that's just yeah, my insecurity about it so leave me alone it is what it is <laughs> kenzie has been sick on the potty many a time so this is my first time wow, so what like a call out. <laughs> this is just my first time i mean i'm not keeping count but anyway seems like you are <laughs> Alright, Kenzie, would you please read the blurb? I will. Hold on, no matter what you have to do, survive, no matter who you have to kill. A formidable outlaw family that claims to be the first among nations. A son destined to lead, thrust suddenly into power. Three fierce young women of the Rattan, the Queen's premier guard. A legendary street thief leading a mission determined to prove herself. And a dark secret that threatens the entire continent. Set in the world of the Remnant Chronicles, when outlaw leader Jace meets reformed thief Kazi, a cat and mouse game of false, move in, false moves ensues, bringing them intimately together in a battle that may cost them their lives and their hearts. And I must say really quick, I when I got this, because I got this because it was floating around on TikTok, as a lot of our books are these days, I just, th I just thought it was a standalone book series in a fantasy world, so I wasn't aware that it was a part of like a chronicle series, yeah. um, so th that's my bad. But yeah, so think of this book as like the Six of Crows to Shadow and Bone. You don't necessarily need to have read the other Remnant Chronicles books in order to, I suppose, read this, but um, it all made sense in the end. It's just a lot of like historical stuff that you'd probably gain a lot more knowledge from reading the Remnant Chronicles, but oh well. Still enjoyed it, nonetheless. Thoughts, feelings, emotions. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. I found that it had a lot of tension, but not like just like the sexual tension or anything, but just like, as the blurb suggests, like the cat and mouse game, because like so much was at stake for either side between Kazzy and Jace. Like, there was always a moment where I thought, oh, someone's going to fuck it up and then it's just going to cause a huge scene. But a little disappointed that the dark secret that threatens the entire continent was just kind of brushed over and solved relatively quickly so far. But there, they, there is a setup for the second book, so I suppose there's going to be more towards that. Enjoyed it, nonetheless. What about you, Kinsey? Thoughts, feelings, emotions. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Uh, as you know, I've been listening to the audiobook whilst at work this week. And I found myself, I know that I have spoken before about how with audiobooks I find myself drifting off sometimes and thinking about other things, but I was utterly enthralled by this book. I uh, love the genre of fantasy without, though, like magic. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Like, it is a fantasy universe, but it's really a love story. Yeah, I don't want to call it medieval, but it is, yeah, a fantasy world. So I enjoy a fantasy love story. I do want to shout out a special uh, thing that I enjoyed about the book, being that Kazi is 17. So they did. I noticed that they did not have sex. Yes. Because Jace is older. Yes. And I just thought that that was a nice little touch because so often people just ignore that and that irks me the wrong way. <laughs> I suppose especially in fantasy because fantasy is a whole different sort of like meta of rules yes. and all that stuff. Yes, and I also enjoyed that uh, he wasn't 500 years old. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting throughout the book that like, yeah, they're only 17 and he's like 19 and like yeah. they've gone through so much tumultuous like journeys and it's like they're only really 17 and 19 like yeah. they have their whole life ahead of them yeah but i really enjoyed it there were moments where i thought it was dragging on a little bit and again always as is the case in lots of books our communication should have been key of course of course but, uh, but i suppose this is also kind of i think described as like an enemies to lovers so of course you need yeah. that sort of like communication mishap drag out I, th I just think it was dragged out a little too much at some points. But... Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't as action-packed as I would have thought. But yeah. um, again, I think ultimately 
it is just like a fantasy love story. Think of it as like a modern day gang love story, you know? And I kept, or, yeah, and I also kept forgetting throughout the book that they were 17 and 19, because so it's like I was like towards the end when um, oh, I suppose just everything coming to the conclusion, and I'm like, I for have I forgotten like what age they were? Like, yeah. Have, you know, I was like, are we sure these guys are 19 and 17? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're too powerful. Yeah. But the Remnant Chronicles just must hit different. Yes. I'm very excited because I didn't realize that it was a, uh, what, is it a duology or a. This one's a duology, yeah, yes. So I didn't realise that it was, and I was getting towards the end, and I was just thinking that this is not being wrapped up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we may do the sequel It's called the Vow of Thieves perhaps next week, huh? huh? Oh, I can Maybe. read it in a week. Oh. Yeah, I can read it in a week. <laughs> I promise this time, I promise. I've read four books this week, so I know, you fucking powered through. <laughs> I'm like Kenzie. Or oh, I've read Technically three. Yeah. But to be fair, my my three was Dance of Thieves and then two smaller books compared to you. But like, you're smashing through the pages. Alrighty. Before we dive into like the nitty gritty of the plot and stuff, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna do what we did with another like potty episode. We're just gonna go through a list of characters that we may or may not mention, but we acknowledge that are prominent within this book. So we, call, we of course have Kazi of Brightmist, she is our main lead female protagonist. We have the outlaw Jace Ballinger, who is the semi-antagonist slash lover, I guess. Then we have Kazi's friends Ren, Sonovi, um, and then we have Jace's like family more so. So we've got like Mason, Gunnar, Priya, Jolene, Lydia, Nash, and his cousin Paxton. There is an honourable mention to the Queen and the king although we didn't really know their names until towards the end yeah. so i'm not i don't really kind of care about that and yeah then we've got captain elorian who is always mentioned i assume that's how you pronounce his name as well yeah. kenzie yeah. or the watch captain and zane and perhaps a couple of other miscellaneous characters that you know hold no real value i guess <laughs> <laughs> they, i've already forgotten who they are so dance of thieves is a a book that has follows two point of views. We have Kazi and we have Jace. Kazi is a reformed thief and she works Rattan, which is I don't know, the Queen's personal Yeah, soldiers. the high the most el elite Queen's Guard I'd say. Yeah, they go I'd on say. missions for the Queen. Alongside Ren and Sonovi. And so they are tasked with investigating a war criminal and it's suspected that he is residing in a place called Tor's Watch. And then Jace, his family, outlaw family, has isn't recognised as like a kingdom area as such. Mm. So he oversight, oversees Tor's Watch and other settlement locations. And so Kazi is there to suss, out, suss that out. And of course she runs into Jace, who is a new leader because his father had just died. He's like a patre. He's a patre, yeah. And within his own world is always at risk from other criminal like warlords yeah. and, I and guess, leagues and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you would describe a patro. I just saw as a lord. I was thinking kind of Game of Thrones style of storytelling. You know, he's the lord in the north or whatever, something like that. Yeah, for sure. But of course, with the power of his family come with great risks from outsiders and stuff trying to undermine his rule. So he is battling with that conflict. He's in a vulnerable state right now, just with his father, just dying which is quite a depressing way to start a book as well yeah. like at the death of a family member and yet then their worlds kind of intertwine and their adventure begins so uh yeah so kazi is in they're in hell's mouth which is so what tor's watch is the land i think tor's watch is the is the actual like civilization oh yeah so then the land yeah and then hell's mouth is a nice town within because in the letter to the queen she's like we're in tor's mouth oh, yeah. tor's watch tor's watch sorry <laughs> <laughs> tor's mouth <laughs> um yeah so i think it's more like or even so it's more of maybe jace's family's private like estate perhaps yeah. that's right yeah so then they go into hell's mouth and oh they're just investigating talking to merchants trying to get an idea of where these um this captain might be 
there's a lot of like history and reminiscence throughout these early chapters as well like a lot of semi world building for people who haven't read this book who haven't yeah. who haven't read the remnant chronicles and stuff i yeah i didn't feel like i was missing anything and i didn't feel like i was particularly seeking out more information as well i just felt like i was very well thrown into the universe and it was just very well written the way um everything was described and i could visualize what was happening which was good because i know yeah sometimes with books within an already established universe you do notice that you're missing information but yeah so they're looking for information um and they come across the patre and his straza which is his personal guard and they're all all a little bit hungover um and then eventually i won't go into the nitty-gritty but uh jace and kazi are captured by labor hunters so which are uh yeah just bad people who steal other humans to go and sell them into working very like much sites. trigger warning human trafficking vibes yeah <laughs> yeah see i thought that this was going to be like the grunt of the book like the labor hunters like they're going to go somewhere mm. and they're going to like escape together and not escape same like, i thought it was going to be about yeah where they get taken but, but yeah but i don't mind in the beginning of a book where like the antagonist because he's not really an enemy enemy yet until no. you learn more information yeah. i guess and i don't think he ever is the enemy no yeah i suppose they're just on the wrong they're all just on different, different perspectives i guess yeah. yeah but anyway i love it when like yeah the hero and the antagonist are kind of shoved together and forced to yeah. work together from the get-go it's always so fun yeah. and it is um yeah set up from the start that kazi is a reformed thief but um she still does manage to uh you know like pickpocket things and steal minor things like she steals some oranges from a merchant yeah. by juggling them and playing tricks and then like putting some into a bag so it's set up that she has fine nimble fingers <laughs> yes and it is set up that she is like one of the, the most notorious thieves in vendra yeah um and she has a nickname called ten yes. because of the ten fingers because of past ruler would cut off the fingertips of petty thieves and stuff yeah, so you get caught so yeah she's pretty dexterous she's a very good rogue so yeah she gets into a fight with the labor hunter and manages to steal the keys because they're all chained together in this wagon there's there's jace kazzy and a few others yeah a few randos and they're actually and jace and kazzy are chained together which is i feel like it's a bit better than the one bed trope almost i don't mind like the chain together thing yeah <laughs> Yeah, so they're chained so, yeah. together by their ankles, um, and they managed, forced to work yeah, together. Yeah, they manage to escape with the, and then unlock their hands because I think their hands are shackled as well. But they manage to get unlocked, yeah. and the other people escape. But then there's a big fight, and Kazi and Jake are unable to remove their ankle chain because, of course, they can't yes. <laughs> under the duress and the need to get away. And then, like, yeah, for them, a good chunk of the first part of the book is just Jason Kazi wandering back to a settlement which Kazi is under the impression is not Jace's family's settlement because they want like a neutral territory to part ways. So yeah, a lot of the time it's just them kind of getting along and just talking. Um, Kazi has a couple of nice little hobbies. She loves riddles and so she's been telling Jace riddles throughout the entire time um, and him guessing, uh, which is cute. And I think they end up like kissing and making out yes, and stuff because, at some point. Yeah, I think they there's a bit of tension, and they decide you know while we're out here because I assume because from when his father died he said in two weeks he's getting entombed or something like it's when he's he's finally oh, yeah. laid to rest so that gives you the idea because they get back on the day he's being put in the tomb so yeah they've yeah. had two weeks together so they have yeah that's a long time to just be the two of you traveling um so yeah they decide to well let's just make the best of it yes the best of it that is like the common uh motif sentence throughout the entire yeah. book make the best of it i love it and yeah so it turns out uh they do reach a settlement after yeah almost like a couple of weeks um because yeah. yeah jace is stressing the fuck out being like i need to be home because yeah. uh, his absence is causing a bit of tension back home as well because the new Patre is nowhere to be seen. It's a sign of weakness. His family, his power is vulnerable. He needs to be there putting all the plans into place for his father. So they get back in time, of course. 
and I loved the scene. I do, yeah, the scene of them working together through everything as well. And then when they were being chased, and Jace is carrying her, and then oh, we yeah, find yeah. out about the wish oh, stalks yeah. that have healing properties. And like, oh yeah, him saving her in the river as well yeah. as they're floating by because yeah. she doesn't know how to swim. Yeah, I really love. Sorry, in the types of books, uh, it's not magic but herbalism for healing. Yeah, I love that sort of um, trope for things. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of this book is even though it is a fantasy and there is like magic out there, yeah. it is not heavily written in this in the series so far, which is great. Because, again, at the end of the day, you strip it all back and it is just, like, an outlaw love story. Yeah. You know, the the young girl and the bad guy. Yeah. Seemingly bad guy. So, yeah, they get back. And I loved this. was probably one of my favourite scenes of them, how they're being ushered through the halls and they're getting, like, cleaned up as they go. Yeah. Someone's handing yeah. hot towels and they're washing themselves. Someone's found her a dress. And, and yeah, Jace, no one's, yeah. like... No one's causing a big deal, like, oh, this is a return chick, what the fuck are you yeah. doing? And it's like, alright, we don't care about, we just need the formalities, yeah, let's go. Jace we need is to getting changed. We need a safe face. Yeah, I loved it. It was great. It was so good. But then this is where, like, the real, as the blurb described it, cat and mouse game began. Yes. And it became really tense, kind of, ever since as well. So, Kazzy, being a return soldier, and who's from Vendra? 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 Ven Vendra. Ben, no. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't matter. Sorry, I, I have sickness, fog brain. I, that's my excuse. Yeah, so, like, Jace can't let her go, otherwise... Because the, they have tensions with the other kingdoms surrounding them yeah. because their land isn't recognised. Yeah, because they're yeah, trying to get recognised as their own kingdom. And their borders are very dubious. And just also, just internal conflicts are, at home are happening, like... Settlements are being burnt down and all that type of stuff. But yeah, so Kazi is recognised as a guest, and everyone kind of, Jace's whole family kind of susses that like there's a romantic interest between them from the get-go, yeah. which I found a little annoying, because it's like, your father just died, or his father just died, and he just went off, and he's come back with a girl, yeah. it's like, uh... but yeah, so if, if Jace just lets her go, Kazi would it would cause perhaps a bit of power weakness, which would make the family vulnerable to the outsiders. But, um, you know, and if Kazzy hurts, somehow hurts Jace, obviously the family would have more conflict with uh, Ventra as well. And it would have just been a whole mess. So they had to have to play it safe and smart. Because ultimately it's in Jace's best interest to, like, you know, have a, have a united front, you know. Yeah. I saw, because when I was looking up the book, um, I'm trying to get a, like, oh, what's it all about before I just jump right into it. I thought, like, one of the things was saying how the trope of fake dating yes. was one of the tropes. And I mean, I guess you could call it, f it didn't come across to me as fake dating. It just came across as, yeah, they liked each other. Well, they loved each other, but they weren't communicating that to each other. Because I yeah. understand that, yeah, she went along with it for her own benefit as well. I wish kind of wish we'd had a chapter or a scene where they'd had that discussion like this is for our own benefit we have to like yeah look like we're a couple yeah yeah i think there was a minute moment i think because initially in the beginning yeah kazzy punched jace in the in the face and like everyone's like oh no the patre got punched whatever and then like they kissed in front of everybody yeah. as like a uh, reaction to that to show that they're like in love and blah 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 I feel like that moment itself was that kind of conversation, but yeah, I would have loved a bigger scene where it was like a, where they talked about a more broader plan, like, all right. Oh, but to be fair, he doesn't know her intentions anyway, so. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, messy. But Kazzy, she can, she, she's adaptable, I guess, because she's had to be. I guess because, yeah, she wants information out of him in the end. Yes. She just wants to, yeah, use his resources in order to suss out where this captain is. Yes. Who, I never understood the significance of this captain. <laughs> he, he caused, he was like a mass murderer. He caused like a massacre, massacre. Oh, yeah, he was behind that big. Yeah, yeah, in like the Morrigan plans and stuff. I believe it's in the Sentinel Valley. So yeah, he caused that. He's a fugitive. He's been on the run for ages. And yeah, and we know where he ended up. Yeah. <laughs> And also, yeah, I'm not sure uh, Jace was aware of... No, he was known to 
he was known as someone completely different to Jace. Like, Jace referred to him as Beaufort. Yeah. And he was, like, Captain Alorian. Yeah. Unless it was Beaufort Alorian. Yeah, because B.I. Um, I'm not sure. Ah, uh, yes, there we go. I was like, why but is I he guess, referring yeah, to him as Beaufort? Yeah, because Tor's anyway. Watch is a separate entity unto itself. Um, they wouldn't have known. And pretty much, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, pretty much a good chunk, like, majority of this book is, like, Kazzy and Jace and her friends or compatriots are, like, yeah, invest, subtly investigating, figuring things out. Um, they've negotiated a settlement to be rebuilt because Jace pays, uh, makes the Van- Vendron community folk pay exorbitant amount of tax mm. Due to quote unquote trespassing, but you don't have defined borders, so like, where's the line? Yeah. <laughs> and so Kazzy was able to manipulate her way to like, all right, you got to rebuild the settlement and move it to a different place, but then that might conflict with like the king of Iceland or something like Island, that. Yeah. Elandia. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, a lot of more political conflicts ensue, but. Um, she also negotiates that Jace himself has to help build the settlement, which he does. He he doesn't really go back on his word. And so, yeah, a lot of it is just, like, character development and sneakiness. Of course, Kazzy's friends, Ren and Sonovi, also kind of start falling for kind of Jace's brothers and stuff because we love that. We love friends and, like, <laughs> yeah. keep it in the family. Yeah. So Sonovi and Mason kind of get it on at some point. Um, well, it's not... Uh explicitly written no, no, no but yeah it's impl- it's implied <laughs> it's heavy heavy Im- implication yes. there and then ren seems to have some sort of entanglements or at least feelings for samuel and amel amel Emil, I yeah i think they're twins so like <laughs> twins basil twins <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so kazzy and um, attends like a lot of family dinners and functions. They meet with the family. They go on tours around the estate. They go to all these like there's like a black cottage. There's like a tunnel. There's vaults. There's all this types of stuff. Yeah. Did you? Did you I don't know if it's in the book because I have the audio book. There's these chapters that are from a third uh, point of view, and it's kind of explaining the history. Oh yes, yes, yep. yes. Yep. Um, I kind of skimmed over that, yes. not gonna lie. Well, I could <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, you had no choice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Jace was, in his chapters, he was very indulgent in telling Kazzy about the Ballinger history and how they were a family of the, of the ancients and, like, this land, like, truly does kind of belong to them. Yeah. Oh, and Kenzie, Kazzy also subtly negotiates or at least manipulates um, a letter to the queen in order to for her to visit in order to recognize the land. I know because it's kind of told to us that what she wrote it was a secret message. But yeah. did you think that she was putting a secret message in? <laughs> yeah, I'm like fuck no, the queen's not going to go anywhere near there. Yeah. Like what are you talking about? <laughs> I suppose again, he's 19. Like he's going to like light light his eyes up at the thought of a queen recognizing his dingy little town. Yeah. But yeah, it's insane. Yeah, I knew she was never going to come. Yeah. I know this is revealed towards the end, but did you... Because when Kazzy said at the end, oh, she just she can't travel, did you think she was, like, ill or sick? Uh, yeah. I thought she was ill when she was saying, oh, yeah, she can't travel. Or I thought maybe she's already dead or something. Because I imagined, yeah, an old queen. Frail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like good old Lizzie. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, and it was a quite quite a surprise when we learned that she was pregnant as well. Like, ah. Yeah. And then they just throw in the, oh yeah, she miscarried her first child or oh, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. A bit of a downside is a lot of, like, little bits of information towards the end. Like the king's name, King Jackson. Like, I don't give a fuck about you, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Jason, Kazzy, and Co play nice. Kazzy has two other friends that or were able to weasel their way into the estate. Uh, Nadia and Eben, they play as cooks. Uh, hus- to Kazi, it was a guise of husband and wife, but mm. they're actual husband they're and actual wife, husband. which is cute. I thought, yeah, that was cute, but then, because I think it was implied that either Ren or Sonove... I think Ren... Yeah, had a yeah. thing for Eben. Yeah. Or they had past relations, and then I think that that was just brushed over a little bit. I was like, oh, okay... I suppose. I mean, she has she has Samuel and or Amal now. Like, she has twins. She's got two for one, baby. She has options. She does. Mm-hmm. She does. 
so yeah, that was actually quite funny, you know, watching Nadia and Eb- did, did you say Eben? Eben, yeah. Yes, I was like Eben, Ooh, Eben. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah, kind of manipulate their way through, and because Jace is trying to also seemingly make Kazzy feel comfortable, but also kind of impress her, because mm. he hired these cooks um, in order to make food from her homeland, which is very, very sweet, actually. Mm. Um, so yeah, what else big happens? They they build the settlement. That's yeah, they kind of rebuild like one of the, main the settlement for the Venden people, and and there's a guy named I think. Seamus. That's how C E A M U S. I'm gonna assume. Oh it's yeah, Seamus. yeah, Seamus. That was it. Was Seamus in mine? Again, kind of a relevant side mission. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's part of, I guess. Yeah, like they in could the name have of just, the treaty. Yeah, again, it could have just mentioned that they'd gone and rebuilt. Like I don't think we did. Oh yeah, because they had that person, that girl, come up to Kazzy and call her ten. Yeah, and Kazzy and was Jace like, like "You're mistaken," and Jace is like, "What?" and Kazzy's like, "Ha ha, nothing." <laughs> <laughs> next, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Next, <laughs> but it's also good little bits of character development for Jace because Kazzy gets to see like a more generous side of him. But to be fair, you force this generous hand from him by by negotiating this rebuild. So like. I don't understand why, because I think she probably started to like him a little bit more because, you know, oh, he's helping, but it's like you forced him to help. Yeah. <laughs> but again, the, she's 17, he's 19. Yes. Like, the young kids, who cares? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, she had, I'd like to believe that's because he was in love with her, but I feel like she had so much power in this settlement. Yeah. Thing. How ironic. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just because he was like, oh, you're so sexy. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby. I'll do whatever you want. Mm. Nice submissive, submissive little patre. We love it. Yes, <laughs> but no one else would dare, you know. Yeah, no one else would demand that from the patre. All it takes is a pretty face. Yeah, <laughs> and he has a cute moment with a kid named Kerry, who you know they talk about him, his education or lack thereof, and so as part of like the the banter of in, extra interest, Jace hires hires a teacher to you know oversee the education once the settlement is yeah, built and then says that they'll um teach the adults as well exactly yeah and it's so cute yeah which is um, lovely one of my favorite scenes as well was like they were all having dinner and you got like because there was like 30 ballengers and then the 30 like v- vendors vendrins or whatever Vendons. like i don't even know vendors and it's like i was just hoping for like jace or kazzy to like sit with the other just to kind of yeah but then they merge danced but they danced, yeah, yes, they danced it was so in the middle. Oh, almost forgot, um, Kazzy was snooping around some tunnels and she got bit by poisonous dogs. Oh, yes. So that's fun. Yeah. And that caused a bit of a tiff between Jace and, and Kazzy. And you know because... how I feel about people being injured and then doing things. <laughs> <laughs> it was very, a lot of sexual tension. Yes. Yeah. And just, oh, he was so caring. But I just also, yeah, poisonous dogs, what the fuck. Um, yeah, like, Jesus. But there were so many things, like that oh what were you doing down in the tunnels and then his family's like oh you like we said that you'd yeah. we, we, you'd oh we told her that you'd give her a tour so it's your fault because you were busy in business meetings so she went by herself they covered for her yeah, <laughs> they there don't was even so know what she was doing down there when she yeah just lied and he was just like okay <laughs> but to be fair he also lied as well like it was it's a back and forth of lying true See, that's the frustrating and tension about it, because, like, ugh, yeah. someone's going to break. Who is it? Yeah. But yeah, I was a bit bewildered when I think his mother was like, oh, yeah, you said you were going to take her on a tour. And it's like, why are you covering for her right now? Yeah. But I suppose they're still trying to save face and look powerful in front of the settlement. But yeah, back to the rebuilding a settlement. Yeah, they were dancing. It was cute. And it was described as her... She wasn't paying... She was just paying attention to Jace, but, like, she heard other people dancing around her, which was nice. A good bonding moment for everybody. Yes. And I, again, his family seemed so lovely because when they went into town, they just took her to go and get dresses made for her and stuff. So it's like, is this your daughter now? Like, <laughs> yeah, they've adopted her. Yeah. <laughs> they've already proclaimed her as the daughter in law. It's fine. Yeah, it was, I found it was very quick from the family as well to accept her mm. and be like, I, I'm thinking maybe because. If Jace is like the oldest son or whatever, or now he's the patre, it's kind of expected of him to take a partner, or perhaps it is to look strong and also to keep up. Yeah, because he said, yeah, at the 
from the top when they got back to his father's funeral he said everyone's like where are you and he's like oh i'm making sure that there's ballinger line goes on yeah idiot <laughs> <laughs> and he's only 19 you're all up ahead of your butt relax yeah relax. so yeah but yeah the poisonous dogs were rough jesus oh i know i mean a lot of it is filler but so all throughout it kazi is telling us about the reader um about a par Vesey, Parvesi driver? Per- uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As like Parivi? Uh, Pre- Previsi. Previsi Pre- driver. Previsi yeah. driver, yep. Um, who came and stole her mother in the middle of the night when she was six, claiming, I'll get a good price for you. So it was a labour hunter. Um, and he wanted Kazi as well, but she was hiding under the bed. Yep. She's often very triggered throughout the book in seeing, like, yeah, the Previsi drivers or their wagons or suspected of that stuff yeah so she's talking about this provisi driver who came and stole her mother um and when she was six and now she's 17 so she keeps saying about how she for 11 years she's been searching for him um and then it turns out jace knows him because jace gives her like an extra tour down like a secret area and she recognizes these wagons and yeah the provisi are like illegal merchants or selling illegal goods um, also, oh no, not, not necessarily, because Jace described Zane, which we learn is the Previsi driver who took Kazzy's mum. He described him as a flesh trader. Yeah. But I think flesh trader and I think everyone Previsi are different upon, in itself. Yeah, flesh trader. But I think it's just, yeah, the Previsi's like steal goods to resell and stuff like that. Yep, yeah, for sure, for sure. So it is learnt that Jace Tours Watch is pretty much a home base for them. And they come and go, and they also sell their goods in Jace's, like, it's described as an arena, but it's quite an elaborate marketplace. Yeah. A business sector, I guess. And while, yeah, this is all happening, Jace is, um, is wanting to negotiate with some bad folks about making weapons and finding a cure for, like, a fever cure. Because we learned that his younger siblings died from that. So now we have, this is also where, like tension and like the lying and the deceiving and like you should just communicate and tell the truth to each other this is where it all starts to play out really so jace taking in kazzy's um like back life story about the provisio driver and stuff recognizes her description of him even though he in her face he straight up lied to her about like not knowing him or not knowing any driver of that description he recognizes him to be zane which is someone like i think jace has that runs like all the sus errands and stuff like he is he is the i know a man type of person (laughs) so then jace finds him and like kind of and he finds out the truth of what happened which she did take her but then her mum died on the road i don't believe him i don't believe him um and then he like he he's going he has him uh imprisoned like tied up somewhere um and he's going to tell Kazi he just needs to find the right time and place but while this is all going down Kazi uh and Sunove and Ren and Eben and Natia are all planning their this is how we're going to capture the captain and five others I think that are conspiring with him yeah because they because one night Kazi was looking at like a cottage I forget what it's called dark cottage uh, yep and she saw someone like sneak in there and she asked Jace about it one night and he's like, oh, it's just a groundskeeper. I was like, cool, whatever. Fucking liar. Liar! <laughs> Lie number two, Jace. Lie number two. Um, and also in the meantime, like the queen has written her quote unquote letter back saying that um, she's on her way. See you in a month. Bullshit. But we knew that. So everyone is low key excited for that as well. But yes, uh, Kazi and her crew are trying to create a little scheme in order to arrest these folks. Yes, and while when Kazi was injured by being bitten by the dogs, uh, she is given a I don't know some powder to put in a drink, which is a um, it takes the pain away, but it birch birch wing. Yeah, but it takes the pain away, but it's also a sedative. And because Eben and Natia are posing as the cooks, they conspire to put it in the Ballinger's food to knock them out so that they can grab the captain and his friends and escape. Yes. 
And of course, we learnt that like Ren almost fucked it up because I think Mason or Gunner or someone was like, oh, we heard Ren put in an order for like a huge dose. But again, Jace was just like, oh, maybe she got the measurements wrong. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like when Mason gave her the dosage for Cassie, like Ren was adamant that he never told her how much was a dose. Yeah. But then Mason said to Jace, oh, I gave her four doses. Yeah, I worth. told her that it was four doses. So, I don't know who to believe. Yeah. Ren is sus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, now that I realise it. So yeah, a lot a lot is happening. There's a lot of like little power moves are at play. Or uh, also at the settlement, the one that they rebuilt, they were also attacked yeah. by some folks. We learnt later they were hired were they hired by Zayn? Uh we are, we are assuming so. Or well, actually no, we don't know because I think I'll tell you who I think it was later. No, Zane hired the la the slave hunters, labor hunters in the beginning. Yes, that I know, but no one knows about this attack. But they recognize that one of the uh, people with them was Galen's lover or sweetheart, Bet betrothed or something. No, because she says that she didn't love him. She was just like, oh, I just like his affections. I just using him. But yeah, so I think. Well, who do you think is still sus out of the whole thing? Uh, Paxton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was all organised by Paxton, because Paxton wants to be Patre. Or even the king, because we saw that interaction with Paxton, like, they seem pretty cosy with each other. I, don't, I think the king, yeah, obviously the king as well is playing dumb, because he's like a lousy king farmer. Yeah, that the king doesn't know what's happening, but Paxton is like, I'm doing this for the king, like. Yeah. To get it is good favor. Yeah, for the kingdom. But yeah, Paxton is sus. So yeah, the elaborate scheme. It is dinner time. They are, um, Kazi and Ren and Sinove are under the impression that Eben and Natia have, uh, laced the Ballinger's food. Um, and so they, the Ballinger's are all getting a bit sleepy. And then James is, so they're all retiring to their chambers for the night. And James is a bit stumbly. And so Kazi takes him back to his chambers, puts him in bed and says something in Venden to him, which we later found out is I love you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, has he already said it at this point? Ooh, good question. No. Oh. I think it's when he was captured by her. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so then um, they're sneaking out, Ren and Sinove and uh, even then Tia and Kazi got the people. Blah blah blah, and then they are sprung by the Ballingers and the Straza and one million other people because they're like, yeah, Jesus. what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and this is all because Ren, this is because Ren had, oh. yeah. and that they were acting sus as well at dinner. Well, the night, the morning, in the morning at breakfast, are acting sus. I think, I think Nadia and Eben were they were sus with their overjoyous conversations, probably with Kazi and stuff. Hell ensues. Jace, Jace and Kazzy have a bit of like a, a standoff moment. It's like give because me the then knife. they bring Zayn out and they're like, "Yo, this is the guy who took your mom." Yeah. Did you think she was gonna trade? Yeah. Yeah. I did and too. they're like, "We'll trade you him for all the people you're trying to take." And this is where I get frustrated, kind of with Jace, because it's like you're harboring fugitives, my guy. Not that he knew that. But again, we forget in this moment, like, he is an outlaw family. He is, he steals from quote-unquote trespassers and all that. Um, his whole estate is, like, one dodgy business deal and he's working with people to make weapons and stuff. It's like, we don't trust this guy. But he's also, like, he's working with people to make weapons, but the people making these weapons are also planning on double-crossing him. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just a mess. Whole, whole mess. So, yeah, so she takes Jace as well, and should we just spoil the end? Yeah, let's just go for yeah. it. So uh, they end up back at the Queen, and then the Queen's like, you know, like, she Mama. says to Kazzy, she's like, okay, well, tell me about Jace, like, tell me about this extra prisoner that you brought me. And Kazzy tells her the whole story, and then the Queen is saying, you know what, like, I'll give you your kingdom, I'll recognise Tor's Watch as its own kingdom or whatever, the first kingdom. Hey. Um, but, like, will you, how do I know that you're not going to, like, go back to your outlaw ways or whatever? And he's like, you don't. And then so the queen's like, okay, well, I'm going to have to send an ambassador. Ha ha ha. Like, Kazi, will you take this position? 
because Jace like has always has always asked her like stay with me like stay with me forever blah blah blah. Yeah, they didn't want this kind of to end. They didn't want to leave each other. They yeah. didn't want to separate. So knowing that when Cassie took Jace, yeah, did you think? That she took him because she's like i know that this is what the queen is going to do or was it just luck of the draw i think she had no other choice i think she couldn't just let him go in that moment she had to kind of be stubborn and i think she was very very rightly pissed off about this whole situation and upset so i even if it was just for spite even like i didn't think like he was she was going to send him to the queen like he, like they could have been like all right jace you can go now at this point or I thought that, yeah, maybe halfway back or whatever, she'd, like, let him go and be, like, run. Like, in the middle of the night or something, she'd let him escape. Yeah, I think during, yeah, the, his capture with her, I think it's when he says, I love you. I don't cry, quite remember. It's like, is that what you wanted to hear type of thing? Um. So, yeah, that was also a very tense journey because, like, again, I know Nadia and Eben and... Sonovi, or Natia, sorry. They all had everybody covered, but I always felt that, like, the captain would have done something stupid, or... And, like, Sonovi had, like, this pr bad, not relationship, but she knew one of the prisoners who killed her family, and, like, she was ready to just rip him a new one. Which she ends up, you know, killing him in one of the most gruesomest ways possible, which is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, it was very tense. And then we learnt throughout that journey as well that like the captain wasn't making a cure for the fever no, or whatever for Jace. No, he just said that to get in. And of, of course Jace is now like, he doesn't know who to trust, but like you're an outlaw so like no one inherently trusts you anyway. So it's like a weird kind of gamble. But yeah, the Queen hears Jace out, Jace yeah doesn't trust himself. And then what annoyed me at the end almost is um, they were just kind of like happy to be together again. Yeah. like. It's like you were like you were angry at him yeah. for ages. And also, like, despite happy. everything that happened, like with Zane and everything, what? Because they were in love. They were obviously in love with each other. Like, what if it hadn't all gone ass up? What was stopping Kazi from staying and just sending the people back with Sonove and Ren and Even and Natia? Like the prisoners. Yeah, and then she could have written a letter to the queen, like, "Yo, I fell in love, bitch." I think it's just perhaps the, the Ballinger family would have seen because it was all about like the jurisdiction of the law like they're in like the prisoners were in Tor's watch not that the family I think knew about the history and what they've done they just see them as citizens of Tor's watch and that like yeah the queen has no jurisdiction here I think it's more that so they, I reckon the family would have been pissed off with Kazi anyway despite being in love I think they would have been like well yeah you're trying to impede on our sovereignty so no that's just my thoughts. What about you? Would you have obviously thought that she sh could have just stayed? Yeah, I would have liked to have seen her just stay. Just be like, oops. She's very strong-willed and stubborn. I don't think she would do that just for love. And I think, yeah, it's... I have to remember as well that she is only 17 and that the Queen saved her, essentially. So she does have loyalty to the Queen. That's like another yeah. mother figure to I wasn't her. expecting, yeah, the Queen to be as nice as she was. Because again, yeah. yeah, I was expecting like an older, more like frail queen. Young, rejuvenated lady who has who is now a baby, who is a mother. I think in the beginning of the book we see Kazi reminisces of like days of training. I think she was a bit harsh. the queen was a bit harsh in the training, but it's just to make her stronger and to make her prepared to be a soldier. So but like in terms of actual respect as a person, yeah, she comes across as very motherly. So yeah, and then, yeah, we learn the names of King Jackson, like, sir, I don't care about you. <laughs> and then we learn her real name, her, like, she's, like, Queen, um, Leah. yes, it's, like, it's, like, Jezalea or something like that. Ultimately, the Captain Elorian and all that, um, obviously is gonna be sentenced and stuff, and they'll be paying their dues. They will face the noose. Face the noose. Although two people did die, as we just said. One of the I forget the name, but one of the guys, Sonove knows she killed got him killed. Bar and Phineas. Yeah, Bar and Phineas. And Phineas was like a scholar and he turned his back on his people yeah. essentially. And he's told Jace, he's like, it all starts with the stars. And he's like, What? He's like, What, what does that mean? Also cute at the end where like 
Jace promised Kazzy a riddle and he tells her the riddle. Did you ever try and guess the riddles? It's gotta be love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah. Love or heart or yeah. something, because uh, holding, tapping yeah. his, holding his chest or something. Yeah, like my heart or something. And then we are left with a nice little cliffhanger. Yes. The bird was dead. He'd seen it all from the sky. A dozen arrows had followed in flight. One had found an, its bark in the bird's breast. He scooped it up with his bony fingers and cradled the bird. Its neck was broken and the head fell in an elegant swoon over his arms. He already knew the note attached to its leg. He already knew what the note attached to its leg said. He'd stood behind Jelaine as she wrote it. Ooh, I wonder who that would be. Jace, Kazzy, anyone, come, please. Samuel's dead. They're, they're banging the door. I have to cut off. He'd known she wouldn't have time to finish the note. She'd barely had time to release the bird. He looked down to where the arrow pierced its strained breast. He gripped the shaft and pulled it from the bird. A spray of downy white feathers floated to the ground. He didn't know if it would help, but he had promised Jelaine, and he always kept his promises. He lifted the bird to his mouth, whispered against the feathers. Not yet. Not today. Then he threw the bird into the air. Its wings snapped taut catching the current and it flew away from Tor's watch. So right now, I think I'm a little confused. <laughs> so did he infiltrate the bird? Okay. I'm assuming he infiltrated the bird. <laughs> I so it must be a brother. Yeah. I'm guessing it's Gunnar. No, I'm guessing it's Mason. I know that's my first guess, but like Oh, it's always Gunner. the person you most medium suspect. <laughs> it's never the most or right. the least. Okay, so not yet, not today. So he infiltrated it. Did he take the note off? Yes. Okay. Too easy. All right, someone's a traitor, and that sets us up for a vow of thieves. And I believe there is a little couple pages sneak peek as well, but I, I haven't read, read, read yet. that yet. So, ooh, what could possibly happen? Theories, Kenzie, theories. I think. Oh, I Who is know. banging on the door? The One of the late Paxton and his leagues. Sure. I mean, uh, yeah, really, that's the one of the most unresolved things. It's like, Paxson was a bit of a nuisance. And he was obviously, like, yeah, set up that it was going to be something. And, like, he's sus with the king, and we we're always wary of him. But it must have more implications now that um, the Ballingers have, like... Yeah. And also because it has been weeks since Jace has left. Yeah, true. It would have taken forever. Yeah, it was, like, I'm assuming maybe three weeks? <laughs> And plus, you know, being holed up in the cell and also um, the being interviewed, I guess. Yeah, and now they have to come back, so... Yeah, oof, plenty of time has passed. Plenty of time for mayhem. Well, I suppose now Kazi making... Well, taking Jace with her was a huge sign of weakness that the Patre, you know, can't handle himself and can't handle these sort of threats. Yeah. So someone has decided now's the time to strike. I think, yeah, there was plans in place the whole time and they were just, yeah, waiting... Yeah, for this type. Th they probably probably weren't expecting Kazzy yeah, to take him. Yeah, and I him. think that's why um, Phineas was like, burn that room with all our plans of the weapons in it. Yeah, because uh, obviously Paxton might get a hold of it and use it for himself. So with fantasy books and stuff, and even in like just modern books, like when people talk about business and stuff, it's always vague. It's like, we're making a profit. Yeah. We're, We've got it's a like, warehouse. Where is We've the money stock. coming from? I don't understand. Yeah, it's like yeah. Whereas I'm someone who's like I have to explain every little thing, but then we eventually get to learn that the the weapons were just like a, a missile launcher, yeah. essentially rocket yeah. launcher. But in a world of magic, like you really think a rocket launcher is the best you could do? Yeah. <laughs> like I thought, it was come more on, like just a uh, OP uh, crossbow. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe yeah. I missed a bit of a description. I just read the you know on his shoulder a bit of a kickback. Yeah. So it could be a very powerful crossbow, yeah. but it had a pretty good explosion, so it could yeah, be both, I yeah. guess. But yes, very keen now to read yeah, the next one. I'd like it to be Mason, because I think that's set up really well, because he's adopted, and maybe he's like, I was never really one of you or something. And like, with Paxton. Yeah, ooh, very interesting. And like, Mason was also very pissed at like, Sonove as well, yeah. and like, and Kazi and stuff, betraying the family. Yeah. Huge family values throughout this book as well. Yes, and protect, uh, protect the family. No what? The very Godfather vibes. Mm. I assume this is what Godfather is about. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> I don't know. God, fa fantasy Godfather. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. It's a very bold accusation. 
but yes very interesting but yeah ultimately it is more of a love story it's not as like action-packed like yeah the labor hunters and kazi capturing her quarries and all that like they're the most action-packed yeah. we got like it, it's I not very also violent there's going to be more to do with kazi because when um verlin jace's mum asked oh is kazi short for kazi myra yeah and kazi was like nah but it is yeah. and i was like what yeah. why are you lying mm, i suppose she didn't want to give anything away i suppose she wasn't gonna meant to try and form attachments but yeah ultimately at the end of the day it's just so funny it's like the family is so likable and they're so nice yeah. and it's like <sighs> i i felt for jelaine though because like she felt like she betrayed the family running her mouth but again she's like 16 though yeah. so she's cassie's age and she seems like a very like she seems very teenager in terms of brain development and yet cassie is all like you know a s- super skilled soldier yeah, but Cassie's had like that the trauma you know <laughs> oh true you know and yeah, she's had to yeah, fend for herself that's, <laughs> that's that's very that's very <laughs> fair i sound dumb now um, that's very. Fair. I suppose that's a very good comparison to the two. I mean, I'm sure Jelaine will have a moment in the next book, perhaps, mm. in order to somewhat have a redeem herself. Yeah. I don't feel like she betrayed anybody. Like she was. No, she was just talking to a guy that liked her. Yeah, she was confiding in her lover. Yeah. And it was already known that Gunner runs his mouth, and he was a part of it. But like, he never got like the shitty end of the stick either. Yeah. Do you think it was cruel of Jace to be like to Jelaine, like, look at these people? Because everyone was like scuffed up at dinner. Yeah, look at like, you look at these people. It's like, that's so harsh. Look at what you've done. You don't betray the family. (laughs) Anyway, but yeah, back and forth, lying, deception, manipulation, the tension. Ugh, it was so good. I, what would you like to see in the sequel? I would like to see a Jace and Kazzy wedding. (laughs) (laughs) 17 and 19, come on. It's fine. If if this wasn't if this wasn't set up as like a in like a month time jump almost yeah. i wouldn't have minded seeing them at like like 23 24 25 yeah because i want to know how long kazzy and party were at tours watch because i think they were there for months yeah that's my impression but yeah i think well a vow is a very like ceremonial thing yeah. as well it's a very like strong commitment-esque but perhaps it could be a vow to re- to reve- uh, revenge. Maybe because Jace stuff, does that thing where he like spills his blood on the coins as an offering to the gods. Oh yeah, like a Maybe, blood. Yeah, oh, what if was they it? do blood like promise? a blood oath, yeah, to each other. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, straight away since the queen stuff, like they're lovey dovey again, which I found a bit quick. But, but this is why I was thinking that Kazi was setting it up mm. in that split moment that she took Jace. She was like, okay, she, it was I a can, risk. Like, tell the queen this, and then convince her blah 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 i mean ultimately i think she it was part of their promise yeah. and negotiation or she was yeah other. surprised when she was telling the story and she realized to the queen and she realized she's like oh fuck like i do love him and yeah, then and he has a point yeah, if the queen wouldn't have let him go or whatever i think that's when cassie would have broken him out in the middle of the night and been like i'm coming with you and i think maybe a lise lise liaison and ambassador title kind of gives her a bit of protection as well because now the queen does have a bit of jurisdiction over the area so like no funny business Mm. in terms of like espionage and violence um but yeah what would i like to see happen in the second book probably we're going to learn a lot more about like obviously paxton and whatever he's doing i'm curious as to find out who the traitor is Mm. it is probably going to be mason (laughs) Because I completely forgot he was adopted until you pointed it out. I'm like, but do we want that, like, adopted, <laughs> I never felt like a family, uh, a part know. of the family trope vibe? No. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who is attacking them. It'd probably be whoever attacked, who hired Fertig or whoever it is when they were building the settlement. Because, yeah. Oh, it was like a Devereux, this Devereux person. Yeah. They're, they're linking it to, that's right, because it was a letter from the king that um, Kazi nicked. So yeah, very interesting. Again, like, just a web of, like, what's gonna happen. I like it. I like it a lot. And again, it's not heavy on, like, the magic and, like, the fantasy creatures. Because there were a couple of creatures, but, like, yeah, it's not focused on that. Yeah, it's fantastic story writing as well. It's it's very, yeah, political and mind game-y and who do you trust and Mm. I like Same, very much. I think we got it covered. Yeah. I think we've done well. We have. We're very proud of it. I know. Thing. I've been very nervous about this book. I don't know why. I've just been very excited to read it. Because I think since I started reading Akatar, I think this was one of the first books I bought since starting my re- reread, 
restarting my reading journey. So I've, I think I got this in like September or October last yeah. year and it's just been sitting there waiting ever so patiently. I feel like I was overwhelmed when I opened it. Yeah, because, yeah. Like it's a thick book and the writing is small. Yeah, I reckon it, it would be like, if it was like a bit bigger text, it'd be like 650 pages at yeah. least probably. But then the audio book I think it was like 12 hours so I listened over a week at work, over this week at work. It's a fair effort. Uninterrupted, yeah. Really enjoyed it. Interesting, interested to see how it progresses. Yes. And it is strictly a duology, so it will be the second and final book. Yeah, good. Just clean cut. Yeah, perhaps we'll indulge in the Revenant series, the Remnant Chronicles, in the future. But yeah, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, anyway, as always, thanks for listening. Uh, find us at Letterboxd Book Club everywhere. If you find us one place, you'll find us in all the places. Yep. And, yeah, tune in for this one and hopefully tune in again for the sequel. Next week. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Keep an ear out. Thanks, everyone. Bye.